every week. Every week we show up here and talk about the, the biggest losers of the week. Who would have thought that TCU is in that conversation? Who would have thought my preseason Big 12 champion, Kansas, is in that conversation? Or Oklahoma State with, oh, we return all of our production. We return all of the defenders on a bad defense. Who would have thought those teams are the bottom dwellers of the Big 12 right now? Record-wise, that's the case. Who would have thought, not me, that UCF, that I believed would be a Big 12 championship contender, would put on a performance like that? And let me, so I'll start there. I'll get to the losers of the Big 12 this week because I, I just, sometimes you've got to dissect how teams who had expectations missed those. What went wrong, where it went wrong. Like for TCU, there was an inkling, and I'll get more in depth with them later. There's an inkling of, okay, maybe, because Zeon Chris, the Houston quarterback, wasn't the Houston quarterback. Like, Willie Fritz went to his backup. TCU was very underprepared. Do you get an excuse for that? No. Should I also give you a bit more leeway than like a, than a Oklahoma State who knew what to expect against West Virginia? Maybe. But like, UCF? You probably quarterback him. And, and, and Kobe Hudson's very good. RJ Harvey is very good. I'm at this game and I'm I'm wondering at what point, at what point will UCF throw the ball forward? Like we're getting four minutes left, three minutes left, two minute warnings coming up. UCF's down by 11, you know, hasn't been able to do anything offensively. We should probably throw the ball. No, we're not going to. It is stunning. The Gus Malzahn, this guy who went from Shiloh Christian High School in Arkansas to UCF to build an impeccable offense with the recruiting base of Florida, of Orlando, Florida, has the keys to build something so special. And then opts for a quarterback who doesn't know how to throw the ball forward. And even if he did, he's not given the option to. That is stunning, man. Like, it's funny. I read K.J. Jefferson's stat lines week in and week out, and I chuckle a little bit. He was 12 for 22. (laughs) He completed 12 passes the whole game in a game where UCF never led, in a game where UCF was down 24-3 at halftime. You would expect at least 30 passes from a quarterback on a competent football team who is down by 21 points at the break. Because that's just what you do to get back into a game where you're down by three touchdowns. You throw the football. A QBR per ESPN of 16.7. 12 for 22. Only threw the ball 22 times. Only had 12 completions. 165 yards. Interception. Well, he must have been good on the ground, right? 12 carries. Negative 18 yards. UCF had 165 passing yards. 108 rushing yards. That is 200. 273 total yards of offense. Do you understand? 273 yards is what a majority of college quarterbacks, a good portion at least of college quarterbacks, are tossing on the regular today. Rocco Beck did it against Baylor this week. Like, guys just know Fafita did it in a losing effort for Arizona. Jalen Daniels in a losing effort for Kansas is right there. UCF did that total yardage. How? How? Do you fall apart like this offensively? Gus Malzahn's supposed to be the big guru. National championship as an OC at Auburn. Cam Newton. Oh, KJ Jefferson could be Cam Newton. Those were the comparisons that Malzahn was making. No. Oklahoma State. Oh, Garrett Rangel's in. Oh, wait. Check the watch. And we are so down. It's not even funny. We can't win this football game. Let's put in the backup now, huh? You wrote Alan Bowman last year to a big 12 championship and road Bowman is kind of a bit of a misnomer. He was there. He existed. Was he the catalyst? No. Was the defense, the catalyst also? No, not a very good defense. Who was the catalyst then? Oh, that'd be Ollie Gordon. Where was Ollie Gordon in this game? Huh? Oh, maybe he's banged up. Did he, he didn't play right. Cause I would have heard something about him, but Oh, no, he did 13 carries 50 yards. In an effort where Oklahoma State as a team had 21 carries for 36 yards. Yeah. So like as bad as UCF was offensively, Alan Bowman and Garrett Rangel, and Rangel kind of saved the day there statistically at the end. 
191 yards passing combined. 36 yards rushing for Oklahoma State. That is 200 and 30, I mean, we're looking at truly sub 230 yard performance from these guys. 227. Oh, Mike, Mike, what are you doing? What are your coordinators doing? You were supposed to be a Big 12 championship contender. And this, this is what you're doing. Putting up less than 230 yards of total offense against West Virginia, whose defense doesn't grade very well. They're a good football team. Their defense does not grade very well. Garrett Green, nine for fifteen. Only had the, he only had to throw the ball fifteen times. Clock management, game management. Nico Markiel, baby. They threw the ball sixteen times as a team. Ran the ball sixty-five times for three hundred and eighty-nine yards. Just held on to the football. Hudson Clement is still my dad. I love him. He's one of my favorite wide receivers in the entire Big Twelve. Ah, oh, and there's Kansas. Can you find a more heartbreaking way to lose? How? How do you keep doing this? The fourth quarter, it finally looks like, hey, late touchdown. All you got to do is have the defense seal it, and the Kansas defense has been pretty darn good this season compared to an offense that struggles. And Jalen Daniels, a QBR of 80.5, that's as good as he's played all year. That's as good as I've seen him all year. Devin Neal does his part. I have 14 carries, 71 yards. Your quarterback's an 80.5 grade for the game. The offense puts up in total 31 points. What can the defense do? <sighs> Hello, Sam Levitt. 14 for 24. Of his 14 passes that he completed, four of them were for touchdowns. That's a pretty good ratio. Then there's Cam Scadaboo. 186 yards on the ground. Hey, I, I could have told you. I could have told you what Arizona State's going to do. They're going to run the football. They're going to pass in short yardage in the red zone. See, like Cam Scadaboo's touchdown totals don't match his rushing yards. They haven't all year. They're going to pass the ball in short yardage, especially in the red zone. Spread you out. I don't know if Kansas got that memo. Then there's Baylor. Oh, no. Should have fired Dave Aranda in week five of 2023. Week five of last year. I mean, I, I'm sick. I've been sick. I think this is why. I don't think it's because we're playing games that end at 2.45 in the morning. I don't think it's because of Arizona and Texas Tech this week. I think it's because I have to watch Dave Aranda every week say, oh, oh, look, Drake, look, oh, keys in front of your, look at this, look, we might win. Oh, we're up 14-3. Oh, 21-19. Uh-oh, late, we have a chance. You don't. You never do. Special teams blunders. The defense falling apart in the second half. 24-7, you got outscored. Like, yeah, but Baylor's a second-half team. No, they're not. Baylor's not anything. Baylor, you know, Baylor controls the middle eight. Baylor's got a great defense. Baylor does X, Y, Z. No, no. You don't have an identity. Oh, well, they're, they're a team that can't close. It can't, can't finish it, but they play great that last two quarters. No. At this point, you're too inconsistent to be labeled anything but bad. Uh, it's, exp it's an expensive school. I went there for four years. I got a degree. I just want to watch good football. How much is the buyout? Let me know. I'll rally my friends together. I Most of them are CPAs in Dallas. I'm sitting in a hotel room in Stark, Florida. After watching UCF do that. I'm excited for tomorrow. I think the, the negative vibes are mostly from me being sick. Sorry. I thought the Big 12 was fun today. It's always fun. Alabama lost to Vanderbilt, which is not Big 12, but cool, you know. Crazy, the way that all panned out. I just feel like these teams that were supposed to be good aren't. And the ones that are, you better keep being good. We can have multiple teams in the college football playoff. I would love that. West Virginia rocks. I love those guys. They're kind of fun. They might be my team the rest of the way. I might pick them up. Coming up, TCU in Houston. I instant reacted to this from the passenger seat of a car because I've been traveling for this UCF deal, which was a waste. And it was fun. You know, the swamp was great. And I'll talk more about that this week. But like a waste based on how they played. Like, can you just show up? Throw one forward pass, please. Coming up, TCU, Houston. Locked on Big 12. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. I went to UCF and Florida this weekend. And thank God I did not pay an arm and a leg based on how UCF played. 
I paid bottom dollar for elite seats thanks to Game Time. They have curated deals to make it easier to find the best price on great seats. They have super deals, seat views before you buy, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and even more. Game Time picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. All in pricing. Toggle that feature. You get the total up front. No surprise fees at checkout. That seat view. Oh, it showed me that I'm going to be in like 50 yard line. Boom. There's the feel. And lowest price guaranteed or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. That's right. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code lockdown college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. You can create an account, redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time.